Hi everyone and welcome to Working Wednesday. This is a series on my channel where, you guessed it, I post a video on Wednesday talking about something in relation to working online and or becoming a digital nomad and traveling full time. The first thing I will say is that you'll probably be able to hear some background noise in this video, some traffic noise, dogs barking, you name it. This is the middle of Mexico. And actually it's a true reflection, an accurate reflection of what life is like as a digital nomad. And it's an indicator for those of you that are thinking about becoming a digital nomad as to what life will be like. You won't be in a comfortable, sound insulated office. You might be, but more than likely you won't be. And it's an immense challenge to get over, particularly if you wanna become an online English teacher. And that's the subject of this video. So if you don't know me, I'm David. I'm from London in the UK, but I've been traveling full time for about five years now. I can't believe it. And teaching English online is just one of the things I do to generate an income. And I generally teach B2 to C2 level adult professionals. Most of them are located in countries like Russia and in Eastern Europe, working in industries like banking and the IT sphere. Therefore, this video is pretty much specific to those individuals or for those of you that are teachers thinking about teaching those individuals. However, that doesn't mean to say that these points in this video aren't gonna be relevant to those of you teaching children or people at lower levels. In this video and in the next two after this, we're gonna be talking about online teacher mistakes or more specifically mistakes I made as an online teacher when I started and I continue to make. They don't just miraculously end. The reason I'm doing this in three videos is so that I can really go into a bit of detail in each one rather than having an immensely long 900 hour video that no one watches. So stay tuned for the next one. On to the first mistake. So this is the biggest one. Forgetting that teaching English online is about boosting confidence. When we're doing a TEFL or we're studying how to become an online English teacher, we're watching videos on YouTube, we hear a lot about grammar, vocabulary, teaching idioms, phrasal verbs, you name it, speaking, reading, writing, listening. Of course, those points are incredibly important, but the mistake I made was thinking that those points needed to be at the top priority, the highest level, when actually the vast majority of students, I'm talking 99% of them, at least in my case, come to me for speaking practice and to boost their confidence. Because they're already at a level like B2 to C2, really they don't need to focus on grammar in terms of reading from a textbook. If you're teaching beginner students A1, A2 level, perhaps that is the case. But for someone that is at a higher level already, they may be in a situation where they work for a company where they don't speak any English on a daily basis. They're in a country where they don't speak any English on a daily basis. And that 45 minutes or 60 minutes that they have with you every week, once a week, is the only time they have to practice their English. Think about it from your position. I'm in Mexico right now. I don't speak fluent Spanish. However, every opportunity I have to speak Spanish boosts my confidence massively. You know, you have those little wins, those little victories that can make such a difference when you remember a piece of vocabulary or you can effectively listen to someone and actually have a conversation. It's exactly the same for your student. So if they want to talk about something that happened at the weekend for 20 minutes at the beginning of your lesson, that's great. It's boosting their confidence, it's speaking practice. You can still do everything like correcting errors, recommending vocabulary, focusing on specific grammatical issues that you can feed back afterwards. But don't underestimate the impact that allowing a student to simply talk, to practice, has on their confidence. Mistake number two is all about thinking that teaching English online would be the same as in a classroom. Now, I've never taught in a classroom, but obviously I've been to school. So I know what it's like in a classroom. I know many people that have taught English in a classroom, particularly with children. The mistake I made from day one was coming across as this almost overly professional, stuffy teacher from the 1950s, behaving in a very strict manner, talking about giving homework as if they were a child. You have to come across in a way that is human. You're not a robot. Of course you have to be professional, but not in a way that distances yourself from the student. You have to come across as if you're on the same level. You're both adults. You know, you're both in a situation in life, perhaps, where you're in a position where you don't speak the language in a country, especially if you're traveling full time. And that connection that you have between the two of you really goes a long way in terms of building that relationship. You have to remember that you're teaching grown adults. They are adult professionals, potentially, probably more educated than you are. Don't treat them like a child. Don't speak down to them. Don't patronize them. 
Just because they don't have English as their mother tongue doesn't make them lower than you in life. More than likely, they speak about four languages fluently anyway. How many do I speak? Additionally, teaching in a classroom, of course, requires a lot of structure. However, teaching online, that's not necessarily the case. Many, many students don't want any structure, don't want any plan to a lesson. And I know for many of you who may maybe have just done a TEFL or maybe you've just started teaching English online, that might fill you with dread because we're taught that there needs to be a plan for lessons. That's what we did at school. You know, our lessons at school had plans, but it's not necessarily the case for online teaching. So my advice is just completely separate classroom teaching from online teaching and go into it with a completely fresh mind. Mistake number three is forgetting to build rapport. When you teach English online, many of your students will become long-term students. Yes, you do get some that come to you for specific reasons, perhaps they're preparing for a job interview or whatever, but many of them will be people that stick with you. And a great indicator of a good teacher is someone that is able to build rapport with students and retain students for a long period. Of course, you will get the ones that come and go, that disappear for six months and then come back later. That's fine. The fact that they're coming back is an indicator that you have built that relationship with them. My advice with building relationships and rapport is all about small talk and actually showing an interest in your student's life. I think, and I've had occasions like this in the past when I've been educated, that my teacher doesn't show any interest in me as a person, in my life, in my interests, in my family, in where, I'm, where I come from, in things that I do. So take that opportunity at the beginning of each lesson, it just has to be five minutes, to have a bit of a chat with them. How was your week? What did you do at the weekend? How's work going? How's that thing going that you told me about last time? Because it really helped build that relationship between the two of you. It helps you share common interests and also it helps you kind of identify if you're a good match. So when you do a trial lesson, of course, you'll talk a lot more about yourself and they will talk about themselves as well. That is the opportunity to work out if you're a good fit with each other. Sometimes you will get cases where you, you just don't gel. You're not the right sort of people for each other and that's okay. The thing I thought about with this when it came to relationships and rapport was that I needed to gel with everyone. We don't gel with everyone in real life, do we? So why would it be the same case when we're teaching online? So my advice here, never underestimate building relationship and rapport. It's the most important thing if you want to generate long-term and retain long-term students. Additionally, for the student, making them feel comfortable because ultimately it's all about them. Which brings me on to my next point. Mistake number four, thinking that it's all about your performance as a teacher and what you get out of a lesson rather than thinking about what the student has gained from the lesson. It's kind of connected to point number one in that that student may only have 45 minutes with you for that week and it's incredibly valuable, almost invaluable. Put yourself in a student's shoes when it comes to this. When we do lessons, you know, it's perfectly natural, I think, in anything we do in life to think about our own performance. And of course we should, absolutely we should think about whether we were effective in what we did and what we did in a lesson was actually worthwhile and, and fruitful and made a difference. Of course, we have to think about those things. But the thing I would say with this is take it with a pinch of salt in a way. Don't stress about getting to the end of a lesson and thinking, you know, we talked about crap for 20 minutes or, you know, we didn't cover the plan that I had. We didn't cover absolutely everything. That's okay, you know. As I said previously, you know, 20 minutes talking about something that happened at the weekend or a barbecue they went to or some disaster that's happened in, in their life is practice. It's building confidence. It's adding value. That's the most important thing. You don't necessarily have to follow your plan. You don't necessarily have to cover everything. You've always got another lesson in the future. You can reschedule things. You can come back to things. Flexibility is key when it comes to teaching English online. We also do have to think about, you know, whether what we've done in a lesson is effective. So take, do take that time, but don't stress about it so much because ultimately it is about what the student gets out of a lesson, not you as the teacher. We're on to point number five now, or should I say mistake? This is mistakes, not points. The last one is very simple. Conversation, not interrogation. Teaching English online is all about speaking practice. It's all about conversation. It's not a strict interview. You're not interrogating someone with a big, light in their eye, putting them under pressure and stress to answer questions. 
of course you will get situations, you do get many students who haven't got the confidence to make conversation. That's what you're there for, to help build that capability in them. Honestly, it can feel like sometimes that you are an interrogator, like you are answering questions. Of course, when you're doing an interview situation, then that would be the case. However, when it comes to general conversation, just be conscious of your own behavior and your own speaking. Are you answering, asking questions rather, not answering? Are you interrogating or is it more of a conversation? Are you encouraging your student to actually ask you questions and bring up points or examples that they can think of that can extend that conversation? Are you using small talk? Are you thinking about phrases that you can use to insert, you know, in those awkward silences? I often say, and I've often said since day one, that teaching English online is going on, is like going on eight different bad dates every day, you know, like speed dating. It's a little bit like that. And it, and it actually really helped develop your own conversation skills. My advice here, and I'm gonna use an example of a guy in Russia that I have who's really developed from a point where it felt like I was interrogating him to the point now where he actually leads conversations at times and asks me questions and comes up with great examples to talk about and situations. And why did that happen? Because I gave him the feedback of the fact that I felt as the teacher that it was like I was interrogating him asking him questions with under you know punishment of death and he took that on board i said to him you know try and ask me more questions don't feel scared to get it wrong when you ask a question the change in him that i saw was astronomical you know the the change in his confidence by just giving him that feedback and encouraging him to make conversation and ask questions was monumental so those are my first five teacher mistakes apologies for my voice <laughs> i've had eight lessons today that's probably why. Maybe I should stop speaking so much and focus more on student talking time, which will come up in the next video. If you would like to catch that video, don't forget to subscribe. You can also check out the, what are they called? End cards on that side of the screen, where you can access the next video down there if you are watching at a later date. Alternatively, you can click up there to access my playlist, which is all of my Teaching English Online videos, which go back about three years. So I hope you found this useful. Like it if you have had value added to your life in this. And I'll see you next Wednesday for another episode of Working Wednesday. Catch you later.